Hi guys. Okay, so today we are going to talk about how to build a writing habit, something I'm working on for myself because although I've been very consistent for years of writing for clients because bills, um, <laughs> I have not done as much of my writing for passion project for myself, for my own content. So I'm getting back in the groove for those who don't know or, or who are new here um, or I don't know, maybe this video randomly popped up for you. I have been a professional writer since 2012. And by professional, I consider that like I've been paid for writing. And then it started paying all of my bills within that year. So professional question mark, debatable, you know, um, it's a fuzzy, fuzzy kind of definition depending on how you want to define it. But I've been doing it for a long time. And through that time, I have been consistent and not consistent at all. There have been years where I've written a lot. There's been years where I've written the most pathetic set amount um, ever. So if you want to become a professional writer, there is nothing that is more important than not cold showers, not a morning routine, not exercising, drum roll, writing consistently. Okay. Um, that is the thing that is the hardest hurdle, I think, for a lot of people. They want to make it cool and hacky and find a way around it and like dream of being a writer one day. But like at the end of the day, you have to learn how to write consistently. And that's the main thing that's going to make you a professional writer. And of course, learning your skill set, growing, etc, etc, all the things. But until you're able to write often and a lot, it's going to be hard to get into that career. It's like if you wanted to be a basketball player, but you like never shoot hoops, right? Like it's part of the game. But getting consistent with writing is very hard. So through my 10 years, like I said, I've been consistent and not consistent. But these are my general kind of tips that like I use every time I'm getting back into the habit like I am now. So number one, like, why do you want to be a writer? Like, what is your goal? Like, what, a, why are you going to fit this consistent routine into your life? Maybe you do want to become professional. Maybe you are sick of the job you have and you would like to get into writing. I also just realized every time I slam my hands on the table because I'm making a point, it's shaking the camera. Don't stop that. Um, but what, like, why do you want to fit this in? Right. And it could just be, I don't know, maybe you want to journal a bit in touch with your feelings. I know that's a little sappy for this business channel, but like, maybe that's your why. But I think for a lot of you who are here, it's because you want to be a professional writer. Okay, so you have your why you have your understanding of what you're working towards, because it's hard to just have no reason to be a writer. And then when you're scrolling TikTok, you need something more compelling than TikTok to pull you off of it. We're going to talk about social media in a bit, but we'll get there. Um, okay, so you know your why. And then you got to kind of set a goal based on what your why is. Now, now, hey, listen, listen. I know these little writing gurus out here are telling you that you can make like six figures in one week and work two hours a day because you take cold showers or whatever the hell they say. Um, what I mean by goal is you need to focus on a consistency goal before you focus on the other goals. I could rage about this forever, but you guys don't understand the amount of like DMs and emails I've gotten through the years of like, um, is it worth even writing if I'm not going to make six figures? And I'm like, I have no idea how good you are. I have no idea your kind of network. I have no, what, if you don't like writing, like pitch something else. Go be an engineer, like go do something else. Like if you don't like writing, what, just cause some guru says that you can with a 10 figure mastermind horse. Stop it, stop it. <laughs> if I do one more email about that. um, And it's fine. You know what, monetary goals are fine. But, oh my, please, please be consistent with writing every single day for 30 days before you even think about financial goals. So many people who have like never written in their lives 
are so worried about making a thousand dollars in a week like bro chill like no one's gonna pay you yet until you're good at least at least decent you know um and that comes with practice and by practice it means you have to be consistent so we are focusing on the building blocks of a writing career which is consistency and writing every day at least most days in a week um so you're gonna set some goals now like i said i would highly advise you to not set financial goals because then also it takes all of the creativity out of writing because you're so focused on making the money and being worried about like getting clients is another kind of world outside of the writing and the craft which is why copywriting is interesting for a lot of people and we enjoy it there is the there is the uh you know business side of it where you get clients and stuff and then there's the craft where you have to practice your craft and then you have to blend those together um so i recommend people start out with a time-based goal first you're going to write for 30 minutes every day and i don't care if you have to get like a little notebook and like check off every single day or I mean, if you take weekends off, that's fine, but like, or whatever, you know, make it work in your schedule. But until you're consistent for like 30 days of writing, and I wouldn't even set a goal based on word count, because especially if you're new, to, if you're kind of been in writing for a while, you can kind of figure out how much you can write in a day. Um, like for me, heavily, heavily based, heavy research based work, I can do like 500 to 300 words in an hour. If it is just free flowing thoughts, ideas, something I'm really on fire about, I can do a thousand to two thousand in an hour. Don't judge it based on me. I've been doing it professionally for 10 years. Um, and if you set a, the point is tw like 10 to 30 minutes every day, that's what I would recommend everybody to start with. And then forget whatever the word count is that comes out of that. Cause you're building a habit. It's not easy. That's not, you're not just gonna have free flowing ideas. Um, so, and also a lot of people do like, oh, I need to write uh, 500 words a day and like I have no idea how long that takes. And now all of a sudden that's something that takes up three hours of their day. Nobody's gonna stick with that. You're just not, no one is gonna stick with a three hour a day habit. So time-based is what I would highly recommend, especially cause we're all busy, right? Anyway mentioning that now we're on to the finding the time part of it now uh this is going to be heavily dependent on you and your life require a lot of trial and error um you're going to make a lot of different adjustments for periods in your life some of your young bros with like n n minimal social life no wife no kids so you have more time um you know and then maybe i have some like moms watching with like four kids i can't be like oh uh, you, you should wake up and like have your morning routine and like write for an hour because everybody's life is different and the season of your life is different meaning like maybe you have young kids now maybe they're older maybe literally the seasons in winter it's hard for me to write in the early wee hours i want to sleep i'm a little bit of a bear in the winters in summer it's hot Fall and spring are my most productive writing times of the year. Trial and error, like I said. Um, an interesting thing, like, as you're going through, kind of make a note of when you really were able to write a lot and write well. That helps me kind of narrow down um, what works for me. Like, what did I eat that day? Did I have coffee? Was it quiet? How much did I sleep? I mean, but I'm also at a point in my career where I'm really like fine tuning my life and career of like making it really particular. Um, but that can really help because then you can figure out at the very least, do you write better at night or in the morning? Are you maybe after lunch, maybe when you're on a walk, you have your best ideas, like whatever it is, just start making a note of when the inspiration comes and you're able to write a lot. So finding time. And then number four is creating space for writing. Now that can literally mean space. Um, 
I know a lot of people would be like, oh, I don't have room in my house to like make a writing area. I have lived in tons of roommate spaces, studios. I have lived in the smallest of spaces and I have still found a little nook for writing, which shouldn't even be. I've used like one of those fold out tables um, with a little fold out chair for like 20 bucks at Walmart. Um, and I just, there's something about creating a space that is for your creative work that gets your brain in that mode. Um, it's very hard to write at the same place that you relax. Like if I had to sit on the couch, the same place where I like snuggle and watch movies and like whatever. Um, my brain is not in writing mode. It's not in, cre it's not in work mode. It's not in that kind of mode. It really does help to create a little tiny writing, even if it's not an area, like a routine, maybe making tea, making coffee, like there's something you have like your one notebook and your one pen. I just always, I love field notes. So I just always am uh, promoting them. Although there's a million little tiny notebooks. This is not a notebook channel, calm down me. Um, but <laughs> making a space and a routine in your area. I mean, if you have to go to a coffee shop, you have to go to a coffee shop, like whatever it takes to just get it done. Right. Um, but it will help your brain prime for those writing sessions that you have moving on. Okay. Um, so, um, there's no other way to call this one, but like preparing for resistance. This is the part of our little monkey brains that would rather scroll social media, um, watch Netflix. Now I have no qualms about social media or Netflix. Everybody who's like, oh, quit Netflix and you'll be a millionaire. Shut up, nerds. Shut up. <laughs> Untrue. Um, but like, there's nothing wrong with leisure and there's nothing, I think social media is so great for learning and whatever, but if you're doing it at the cost of what you want in your life, now it's a problem. Now you need to cut it out. Now you need to set boundaries. Um, and because our little monkey brains are so easy at distracting us, it is very hard to push through that time. That is the hardest thing. It's not really so much the blocking the time, making the time, sitting down to write. It's the like, actually in that moment when you want to do anything but start to make a new habit, that is hard. I would highly recommend books like anything by Stephen Pressfield, the one who wrote like all the famous books on... Um, fighting through the creative resistance time of your life. I also have an article I'll put below that I've written similar energy um, when I was first starting my career, God, however many years ago when I st started writing and how hard that resistance part was. But um, just know we all go through it. And if there is any way that you can find ways to defeat that also just a side thought something i've been thinking about a lot too is like how much like social media especially has been like ruining our ability to focus for periods of time whether that's reading books or writing or like just sitting through like that urge to just pick up the phone and scroll is so sociologists are going to study us in like 20 years and have a lot of thoughts on that but like anyway just uh just uh i'm sharing this in empathy with everyone else out there who's going through this i'm a professional this is my job i have been doing it for 10 years and and those apps will get me they'll get me like i understand i empathize very hard um moving on so <laughs> um the next step, no more sites, is set up a fail-safe plan. So I did this as a personal trainer where I had a rule with clients where I'm like, you can skip a day and you better milk that day and enjoy that day off and not just feel guilt the whole time. Like, take the day. That's fine if you need it. Or not thinking about, like, if someone's sick or if, you know, like, someone in the family died. Like, forget that. I'm talking about regular. You're just having a lazy day. You skip it, you enjoy it, you milk it, you watch that Netflix, you sit on that couch, but you do not miss the second day. 
You do not miss the second day, no matter what. No matter what, oh, there's a tornado? That's crazy, you're going to the gym. <laughs> you know what I mean. But like, you need some kind of plan. Okay, so you miss your morning writing block? Then you have one at lunch for 10 minutes. You need a fill, you need rules, rules for yourself to get into this habit of some kind. Maybe you're allowed to miss two days, but that third day you never miss. No matter what, you never miss the third day. It does not matter what happens. Because a lot of people will make, I learned this from fitness, but a lot of people will use that one day that they mess up to just let go the whole week, right? You mess up your diet on Tuesday, well, I'll start again next Monday. No, no, you enjoy that day. You enjoy that day off, you messed it up, that's fine, enjoy it, whatever it happens. Tomorrow, you are back on the horse, no matter what, period. That's it, that's, it works with personal training, it works with myself and fitness, it works with my writing. It's just one I recommend, some kind of backup plan. Um. Okay, from there, once you've got that all kind of down, right? Now you want to measure your growth. Now it's time to figure out how now, like this is where consistency matters, but you need to also push yourself now that you're consistent, right? Because it's real easy to get in a writing groove and like just post on that. Like, I'm sure we have all seen people who are like, oh, I've posted YouTube videos for three years and I haven't broken like a hundred subscribers, right? I've been writing every day for a year, but I have no clients. Okay. I mean, first of all, congrats, because mastering the consistency is one of the hardest parts. However, you need to find ways to push yourself and grow once you're consistent. It needs to get harder. You need to expand more. Um, just comfortably writing in your one hour a day is no longer enough, which is great, which is great. Once you have that, now you need to push, which can be things like taking classes, right? Expanding your skill set, um, measuring the results of your work. So for copywriters, we get to measure like our results. Maybe you've decided you're going to publish your work and like you're writing a blog. So you want to see, are your blog readers growing? right? Are people staying on your posts longer? Um, are you getting more Twitter followers? Like whatever it is that you're doing, you need to find ways to measure and push yourself and stop remaining just stagnant, right? Um, maybe you need to edit harder. Maybe you need to hire an editor who can like rip your work to shreds and push you in a different way. Maybe you need to like push Maybe that's too much and you need to just push on the how, writing more words per day. Maybe you've done 300 words consistently, great. Now it's time for five. Now it's time for eight. Now it's time for a thousand and pushing. Um, don't just get stuck thinking consistency is all that matters because there's a lot of people who get stuck in that trap as well. And you need to push and grow and develop your skills over time. And maybe it's not just your skills, maybe it's other tactics like pitching clients that's a whole nother just like you need to maybe maybe it's really like resetting your goals and figuring out what your next goal is and then like figuring out the tactics there there's so many use case scenarios right um but on top of that number eight which kind of ties into the last one but if all is but but and how do I work like if you're not really hitting your goals maybe it's time to like actually hire a coach join a class that's really serious um sometimes just putting skin in the game aka money um can help you get consistent and like really push yourself and learn from other people who are doing it do your homework to make sure these people are legit but also sometimes the matter of just signing up for a course helps people get serious, which is what I learned from another lesson from personal training that as soon as people pay for a trainer, they're like, well, I'm not letting that money go to waste. And it had little to do with the actual other things. But so that is pretty much it. That is how I generally build habits in my life. I mean, this is 
focused mostly on writing but like I feel like this would apply to a lot you can also read you know like the famous atomic habits book or whatever all the other habits books out there to learn how to build habits but that is how I start to tackle putting writing back to my schedule to make sure it's a priority in my life um that's pretty much it if you guys have tips if you guys have been writing for a long time um feel free to let me know you know I'm always so curious about how other people get themselves to take action on what matters so that is it long one of course but you know building a writing habit is not a small feat so that is it okay bye guys